Macedonia's government wants to rewrite the nation's history. Its Albanian minority fear the consequences. As ethnic tensions increase, opponents say the regime is using surveillance to suppress dissent. The government has been involved in phone tapping thousands of citizens. So where will this very Balkan crisis lead? One of Europe's least known prime ministers, Nikola Gruevski, has governed the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia for nine years, winning an unprecedented four elections. But evidence is emerging of corruption, human rights abuses and wiretapping on a staggering scale. Macedonia and Gruevski's regime are now in deep crisis. This tiny landlocked republic is a spectacularly rugged country, famed for its soaring mountains and majestic lakes. A tranquil beauty that belies a national crisis. Out of a population of two million people, roughly a third live in the capital Skopje, which is changing beyond all recognition. In an attempt to rebrand Macedonia, Prime Minister Nikola Gruevski came up with the idea of Skopje 2014, spending a fortune turning his capital into something approaching a neo-baroque theme park. Architects have dubbed it a Balkan Disneyland. They're spending public funds that come from the taxes. They're spending finance that comes from IMF loans. So the citizens of Macedonia are charged several, several times for this thing, and not only the current citizens, but the next generations. And the follies continue to go up, despite, opponents say, crushing poverty and the highest rate of youth unemployment in Europe. The government has claimed that this whole project will cost more or less 80 million euros. We have come up with official documents, at least the part which has been uh, disclosed, saying that the project so far has costed 580 million euros. Out of this amount of money, more than two thirds of the contracts were not done in an open procedure. This is an identity story that will cover up a huge, a huge robbery. The centerpiece of Macedonia's makeover is a 100-foot statue of Alexander the Great, encircled by warriors, which dominates the capital's main square, much to the annoyance of neighboring Greece, which regards Alexander as their hero. The idea that Macedonia's predominantly Slavic population is descended from Alexander is seen as preposterous. They produced a huge you know, division within the Macedonians uh, population and now we are part of the population we are we still you know we continue to be Slavs and you have another part which is which, which suddenly became antic Macedonians so we are in a, in a way lost as a nation but the capital's martial statues and imposing facades hide another more sinister narrative Macedonia's mostly Muslim Albanian minority seems to have been entirely written out of the country's past. Not a single Albanian hero is commemorated, quite the opposite. This is Tsar Dusan the Mighty, a Christian Orthodox ruler known for subjugating Albanians. Shortly after it was erected, an angry mob tried to tear it down. Ethnic Albanians make up a quarter of the population, many living in Skopje's old quarter, which although picturesque, has been left to fall into ruin by the government. Here, many are disenchanted with their political leaders. 
as Albanians in Macedonia, we have problem with political representative here because uh, regularly Albanian political elites are being bought by the by the government uh, structures with some financial or other other uh, fa favors, which affects the, the the Albanian political history here. Albanians largely boycotted the presidential election last April in protest at Prime Minister Gruevski's choice for presidential candidate, Georgi Ivanov. That same month, Gruevski secured a fourth consecutive term as Prime Minister in a snap election that, according to the OSCE, was marred by widespread irregularities and violence against the Albanian minority. The Zikiri family was among those targeted. A mob even firebombed their home. Other Albanians from this predominantly Macedonian neighborhood in Skopje have already fled, including Femi's nephew, who was badly injured. You'd be forgiven for thinking that the party which says it represents most of Macedonia's Albanian minority, the Democratic Union for Integration, would be opposed to Gruevski. But you'd be wrong. They've been in coalition with Gruevski for seven years. How is it that your party can be in coalition with a government that's presided over all this? Well, your viewers have to uh, know the sensitivities of the society in order to understand the answer to this question. The coalition partners in the Republic of Macedonia are a result of elections. Whoever wins in the Macedonian political bloc and whoever wins in the Albanian political bloc, they have the legitimacy of the two largest communities and they bear the responsibility to govern together, to find, to try and find a common language. Nonetheless, playing a staunchly Christian card wrapped up in nationalist rhetoric helped Gruevski achieve his party's double election victory. And that grip on power, say his critics, has tightened still further by the appointment of his close relatives and friends to key government posts. This is the Prime Minister, Mr. Nikola Gruevski. This is the cousin of the Prime Minister, the Director of the Secret Service, Mr. Sasha Mialkov. And this is the Minister of Finance and the best man of the Prime Minister. It was systematically done that all powers and including the media, unfortunately, are controlled by the leadership, by this government. Of particular concern is the Prime Minister's cousin, Sasha Mialkov, head of the UBK, Macedonia's secret police. They are using the surveillance systems as it is their own property. They are uh, that way gathering, collecting, many different type of information that they are afterward using to attack their political opponents or other people who do not really agree with the politics. The government uh, acted in a very systematic manner, silencing dissenting voices and criticism and slowly but surely taking over the media. And they have proven again and again that once you control the media, you control the truth. The closure in 2011 of the biggest and most powerful and most influential private television was probably the beginning of the final act. Dissenting voices have been threatened in different ways. 
So many people decided to stay out of the battle. One outlet which remains fiercely independent is Focus magazine, whose editor is snowed under with lawsuits from the government. Ovaj period, posebno ovije pet šest godini od vladenja to na Nikola Grujevski, možem da go opišem barem za nas vo Focus kako horror period. Focus was set up by Macedonia's most celebrated journalist, Nikola Mladenov, a staunch critic of the Gruevsky regime, famously saying, we want a society of free people and they want a bunch of spineless goons. There can be no compromise between the two. In 2013, these words proved prophetic when Mladenov's car inexplicably veered off the road and plunged down a ravine. И тогаш се случи чудната сообраќајна несреќа во која загина Никола Младенов. There are many unanswered questions for Mladenov's family, not least why the motorway surveillance cameras were conveniently switched off at the critical moment. And what did the police do with his mobile phone? Барем два или тројца од официјалните лица им кажаа дека Мерцедес од колата е детектирана според мобилниот телефон на Младенов. Few doubt he was murdered. Начинот на кој тој ја заврши, го заврши својот живот, мислам дека ке се открие дури кога ова власт ке замине, која ке падне од власт. Clearly, it's not easy being a journalist in Macedonia. This march was organized to draw attention to the plight of Tomislav Kazarovsky, the first reporter at the scene of Mladenov's so-called accident. After highlighting inconsistencies in the official version of events, he was sentenced to four and a half years in jail, but in a bizarre twist, was released on medical grounds one hour before the protest started having been in detention for 14 months and found himself leading the march calling for his own release. Не можете да се разберете вие со тие луѓе. Сметам дека никогаш не било пострашно да работиш како критички новинар. We wanted to put these and other allegations to the prime minister. But despite repeated requests, neither he nor anyone else from his administration would talk to us. Gruevsky avoids the independent media and prefers instead to pop up on talk shows hosted by fervent party supporters like Melenko Nedelkovsky. Interestingly, last year Melenko published a chilling list of critical journalists he believes should be surgically removed with a knife, adding that if the state won't do it, then the people have their own methods. The list included Borian Jovanovsky. It's not a pleasant. In order to survive, I'm trying to make a joke out of this. You know, we, we, are, we, we have established our you know, self-defense mechanism in order to survive in these circumstances. Well, it, it's a treat. It's an obvious treat at creating a, a stressful atmosphere and to, to leave, but I'm afraid that we have no choice. They never forget, forgive and never forget. So if you do something what they don't like, it will come to, after you. Like other countries in the Balkans, Macedonia is riddled with fault lines, both ethnic and religious. <laughs> It's a combustible mix, and although both sides preach peace and tolerance, the incidence of hate crime is rising. This is the office of the Helsinki Committee, a human rights NGO which campaigns vigorously against hate crime and which has been attacked many times in recent years. The two last attacks were very serious. These groups are organized and they are instructed to do so. They are promoting politics which create, at the end, ethnic tensions. Usually, before the elections, during the elections, and after the elections, 
we have increasement of the number of uh, hate crime incidents and criminal acts. And this is only because the hate speech is the instrument of this government. It is artificial initiation of the ethnical problems. They always keep these problems uh, very high on the agenda and warm because this is, uh, this is the way how they rule. A case in point is the so-called monster trial, which saw six ethnic Albanians sentenced to life imprisonment two years after they were arrested for the alleged murder of five ethnic Macedonian fishermen. The fishermen had been found dead in April 2012 at Lake Smilkovsko, not far from the capital. The crime provoked a massive outpouring of sympathy for the families of the murder victims from both sides of the ethnic divide. Within three weeks, the interior minister, Gordana Jankulovska, flanked by Gruevsky's cousin, the head of the secret police, held a press conference to announce the arrest of what she called terrorists heavily influenced and directed by fundamentalist Islamist ideology, declaring their guilt before the trial. Even the government's coalition partner found this hard to swallow. There was no presumption of innocence. There was claims that the entire case was done due to uh, Islamic terrorism motives, which was never proven as a matter of fact, and we do not believe that that was the real motive behind the case. Then the compromising process continued throughout the investigation with the uh, witnesses and the suspects and the court itself. Nasser Raoufi, the lawyer representing the accused, is particularly concerned about the testimony of four fishermen who may have stumbled across the killers as the sun was going down. According to the lawyer, the witnesses were told to leave and moments later, they heard gunshots. The accused were convicted after 46 court hearings, all in closed session, predominantly relying on the unsubstantiated claims of a protected state witness. We have had several cases of uh, protected witnesses which afterwards admitted that they were actually forced to be protective witnesses or they were promised something to do that. Ibadet Luta is the mother of Sami Luta, one of the convicted men. <laughs> When the verdict was announced in July, thousands of ethnic Albanians took to the streets in Skopje, calling for the return of the Albanian National Liberation Army in the worst violence the country has seen since an armed insurgency 14 years ago. Macedonia largely escaped the wars arising from the breakup of Yugoslavia. But in 2001, a bloody conflict brought the country to the brink of civil war, when ethnic Albanian separatists and fighters from Kosovo began attacking Macedonia's security forces. 
After months of fighting, a peace agreement was signed, since when tensions have simmered beneath the surface. But widespread suspicion about the monster case has inflamed old animosities. They are building the tension over this case. They wanted to build tension against the, the, the Albanian community, the Islamic religion, but they are forgetting that many similar things happened before the, the armed conflict in 2001. Many fear that the heightened tensions could drag other countries into the crisis. In neighboring Kosovo, the head of the Kosovan Liberation Army's Veterans Association is standing in front of a map of Greater Albania, which includes much of present-day Macedonia. We are reaching a certain climax uh, of the crisis, and things will probably get worse before they become better. As if all that weren't bad enough, in January this year, there was also a coup attempt. At least that's what the Prime Minister would have had his fellow Macedonians believe. But filming on the streets of Skopje the day after this announcement, we couldn't find any sign of it. As evidence of the coup, the Prime Minister cited a covert recording of a meeting he had had with opposition leader Zoran Zaev, seen on the right, in which Zaev urged Gruevsky to stand aside and let an interim administration oversee new elections after the opposition had obtained evidence of wiretapping on a massive scale by the government. Zayev has since been charged with treason and his passport has been seized by the police. We are in possession of documents that show, A, that the government has been involved in phone tapping thousands of citizens, their political opponents, journalists, activists, even diplomats. B, the government has been abusing institutions for electoral fraud, for political pressure in the judiciary, but also for political uh, abuse of police forces. Several people have since been arrested. Nonetheless, undeterred by the charges against him, Zaev has begun staging dramatic press conferences in which he plays recordings of illegally tapped phone conversations of journalists, high-profile opposition leaders, and even government ministers. The secret recordings played to stunned audiences have included conversations in which secret police chief Sasho Mialkov allegedly discusses organizing a sexual assault on an imprisoned political rival. As more and more shocking revelations reach the public, anger is growing, and it's hard to know if the government will last. Gruevsky's detractors claim that it is only by creating artificial crises he is able to remain in power. But this one may be slipping out of his control. He is not in a position to do anything to anyone at the moment. But if this information about the surveillance don't bring the change, and if the, this regime exists further, we are all going to be victims. <laughs>